Beautiful. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. So Mick, take yes. us through what we're doing today. Alright, I thought we'd do this. Um, this... It's just gorgeous. Is this, of course, as you can tell from the title That's of the video. Almost as gorgeous. <laughs> um, Analog Man, King of Tone. Dan and I talk about it a lot. Mm -hmm. Dan introduced, you introduced me to this pedal. Um, probably his favourite overdrive pedal. Yep, it's the one I keep coming back to. Interestingly enough, um, it's the one for me that... It's been a staple for me for like 10 years. And I've a beat it against so many different pedals. But it's the one that when I'm sound checking with a band, if I'm A-being with it, oh, I kick the King of Tone on it. There's something about it that I just have not been able to get rid of it yep. off the board. It's just wonderful. So we like it. Everyone likes it. It's a great overdrive. Unusually works well with most amps, if not every amp. Yep. And most um, guitars, including <laughs> lovely guitars like this. Which we'll come on to in a bit. So the, the downside, of course, of the King of Tone um, is that there's Everyone wants them. something of a waiting list. Mm. So, um, you know, you can be waiting for a year or, or thereabouts. Um, so and just about that waiting list, I've been at Mike's Analog Man's and I've seen them working on them. And I know some companies do sort of embellish their waiting lists. Are you saying artificially managed demand, Dan? Yeah, I, I think they're, you know, every now and then. By restricting supply, yeah, is that what you're perhaps, saying, Dan? perhaps. <laughs> um, but not the case with these. Okay. You know, there's a lot of work that goes into them and, yeah, very special yeah. little thing. So if you can't, won't, are in the middle of waiting, Wait, wait and waiting. Um, what else can you get uh, that might sound a little bit like a King of Tone or indeed different from it but perform a similar function? Mm -hmm. So what does it do, Dan? Tell us about the King of Tone. Okay, so basically the King of Tone is two completely independent overdrive circuits. Yeah. Um, this one, mine's been modded to, so you can actually uh, normally you have an input and output jack and then you just, you know, have a, an overdrive and and you can stack them. Yeah. But I can actually uh, switch within G2. I can have them in individual loops. So you can use, them on, use them on. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, inside we have these dip switches, and each side, so one and two is a dip switch for this side, and three and four are the dip switches for these sides. So you can actually set if you want to use the uh, this side for a clean boost, for like an overdrive or a distortion. Um, and then you have these little treble controls. They're like a treble booster, mm. almost. They have real clarity, um, so you can tailor them to whatever amp you're using. So with the J, because the J is very warm, so I tend to have my treble control up quite high. Okay. But in something like the awesome Super Reverb that has a lot of top-end clarity. You might, you might notice that we've acquired a Super Reverb. We have acquired a Super Reverb. It's uh, bad. So, yeah, so you can dial that presence back. Um, yeah, and it's different from the tone controls. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So really special little unit. They use the um, the JRC uh, 458D chips that are in the Tube Screamer. Famous for being in that pedal. That's right. Um, so the... The thing about those chips is there's a... So the Tube Screamer does something very special to the sound, but it also has a very big mid hump. And with having these chips in the circuit, it reacts in a very similar way to the Tube Screamer, but it doesn't have that mid hump. It's still mm. it's still very warm in the mids, but it, it's not mid humped like the Tube Yeah, Tube it doesn't screamer. sound like it at all no. to me. Well, no. actually that's not quite true, not at all. It doesn't sound like it. It doesn't sound like it's in the Tube Screamer family. Sure. Should we yep. say? Yep. Yeah, but it's a you know it's a fantastic circuit. Um, Mike does an absolutely stellar job in having this put together, and yeah. Okay. Well, just, that sounds wonderful. So we're not going to muck about with the dip switches today. We're going to set the King of Tone as it comes, kind of factory standard, which is uh, red side, which is this side, is overdrive. Mm -hmm. So you can have clean overdrive or distortion. So red side is going to be overdrive. And uh, yellow side is going to be clean boost, clean boost. or boost, whatever they call it. Um, you can set either side to either configuration, mm -hmm. but Analog Man says better to have a bit of overdrive to begin with and then be able to boost it afterwards. Yep. If you have a K2 
King of Tone, you can get in there and muck about with it yourself. And also factory standard is to have the treble control at zero. Right. So that's that's how they come if you buy one. Yes, sure. And but the other thing to mention about this is we are we're, we're stacking our gain circuits. Yeah. Yep. And it's a really big part of this sound having the two gain circuits cascading into each other. Um, you know, it just it adds a level of natural compression. So you can have the, have the both. If let's say you have both in overdrive set really mildly. And it'll compound, you know, so you get a lot yep. more overdrive. But the the way having them cascade, the cascading gain stages, gives it a real natural um, compression to it. It's wonderful. Yep, and that's uh, uh, it's the great thing about having the dip switches because you can either boost overdrive or overdrive yep, boost, that's can't right. you? Yep. And actually, when we come on to talk about the full drive in a bit, you can actually change those on the top panel there. Mm. All right, um, and one final thing to mention about custom jacks. Thanks to Jack Duxbury, James Bay's band. I see what you did there. Yeah, <laughs> who's um, king of tone that is. Jack's actually got, his is actually the high gain version. Now, according to Analog Man, the standard king of tone and the high gain are exactly the same pedal. They sound more or less the same at lower gain ranges, mm -hmm. and you can make them sound exactly the same, except that the high gain one, I think, what does he say, 20% or something? Yeah. It's, it's not a huge, it's not like high gain like a distortion pedal, it's just a bit extra. But it does sound really good. Actually. Yeah, you like that, don't Yeah, you? I really do. Yep. I might have to get on the phone. <laughs> right, so without further ado then, let's hear the King of Tone. Mm -hmm. um, should we use a Stratton Les Paul for this just to begin okay. with? All right. Just so we know what we're dealing with, then we can put that on in a minute, because it is magic. I'm, um, yeah. This has given me a real male moment, this guitar. <laughs> it really has. It'll come back, Dan. It will. It will. It'll just um, sit there looking at me. While he's doing that, I'll explain the amps. Fender Super Reverb um, and the Mallard, which is a 18-watt uh, Marshall clone, I believe. Yep, yeah. got a little Plexi Marshall clone. Yeah, so 4x10 speakers, uh, Jensen Alnico's and um, Celestian G12H anniversaries in the Marshall cab. Are you ready to work? <laughs> okay, so Dan's going to play the Les Paul. I'll just switch through um, the King of Tone, show you how dirty it can get. Uh, also, the two sides of it, just to give you a, um, an idea of what the pedal's actually doing. Okay, so clean sound from the amps. Just like Tommy Emmanuel. So, all right, so that's the clean sound. This is the King of Tone. Very warm, isn't it?
So, I've never used my King of Tone with a dime like that. Yeah, yeah. I, um, but it's it's interesting to see that it still works. You yeah. Know, it, actually, it actually is a sound. So Dan actually uses his King of Tone with two clean sides, don't I you? I do. No, yeah. no overdrive, just two clean boosts. And just stack them into each other. Yeah, but I think, the, so what I tried to do there was go through the... Um, you heard how as much gain as it as it as it has. Mm -hmm. You heard the clean side, the boost side, and you heard the overdrive side. I hadn't realised there was that much gain um, level increase in it. Oh, the clean side's got a huge amount of yep. level increase. So that if you're using an amplifier that's compressing, you can still turn the treble up and really bang into it. Yeah, It'll still yeah. work. Very yeah, cool. So there you go. Um, that was King of Tone version four, high gain all the way through. Right, so where should we begin, Dan? We've picked these pedals. So we've got Tim Pierce, um, J-Rocket Tim Pierce mm -hmm. signature. We've got the Love Pedal Amp 11. <laughs> we've got the Tone City King of Blues, mm -hmm. Full Tone, Full Drive 3, <laughs> and a T-Rex. That's awesome. T-Rex Moller 2. Yeah, awesome. Now there are many other dual function overdrive boosts that, out there's there. There's the Lazy J. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Lazy J Lazy Cruiser J. Juice, which is something that I've added in there to show you something a little bit interesting yeah. when, we get, when we get to it. And we've chosen these pedals purely because these are the ones we could put our hands on. Well, they, well they've got an overdrive and a boost yeah, together. That as well. Yeah, that's why they're <laughs> there, you know. Okay, where should we start then? Okay, let's go from the Amp 11. Okay, so, go on then. I'm assuming that that boost is more like the yeah okay so it's a love pedal do a church of tone so yeah, it's a bias, bias thing. control that's yeah, right yeah, okay but that's that is incredible. <laughs> Hang on, we've lost part of our decoration. Lost the flying duck. Yeah. Right, as you can see, we're uh, we're slowly getting our sign together. We're, there is actually one being made. At the moment, this is uh, this is the uh, Blue Peter version. Um, yeah. Anyway, that will probably continue to happen. Right. So let's. Yeah. So that's the Amp Eleven. Yeah. Let's compare it with the King of Tones. So King of Tone is. <laughs> See that? There's a real, even though it doesn't have the mid hump, there's still something about the mids in the King of Tone. The Amp 11 is amazing though. 
It's so funny because you don't think of the King of Tone as a mid-hump, but that it sounds mid-humpy compared yeah. to the Amp 11, doesn't it? But if it? I take out this overdrive side... Yeah. Is actually because I think that the treble control on the boost side is down too low. Because when you kick it in, it, it now that's really nice and present. As soon as you kick this in, it's a little bit flare. But if I turn down the, if I turn up the, the treble on the inside. Okay, we've just done a little pause because. Um, We've actually turned the treble control. Remember we said that on both sides of the KOT uh, there's a treble trim pot in there and um, we decided that on the clean side it was... The presence was then too low so we just... Yeah, too mid-humpy, it needed a bit of... Uh, it needed a bit extra, so here's how, it's here. here's how it sounds now. So that has a lovely bite to it, the Amp 11, whereas the King of Tone... The mid-range is just really lovely. You can, you can hear why that sort of thing is going to sit really well in a band. Yeah. But the Amp 11, kill. <laughs> Killer. It doesn't sound the same, no. but it performs a similar function. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's move on. Uh, next, um, Tone City King of Blues. Now, this is a very affordable pedal brought in by our good friends at Anderton's who've lent us some of these other pedals today. Thank you, Lee, uh, and the guys at Anderton's. Um, so, yeah, right. <laughs> It's 
It's pretty good. It's not bad for like 11p or whatever it co costs. <laughs> 12p maybe, 12p. Actually, Very good. Yeah, yeah. More head, because when, when we first started, I didn't think it was anywhere near as much volume, but then all of a sudden it got very loud, mm -hmm. sort of around here on the volume pot. Yep. Started to get very loud. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, not not up there with the analog man, but you know, pretty good. It's great for uh, no minutes wait and about a third of the price. There you go. Right, moving on. Full tone, full drive three. Now, um, for ages, this was my favourite dual overdrive pedal because it's derived of Tube Screamer, so it does lots of things that a Tube Screamer does. Let's let's hear some of the strat. I think. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. We'll do we'll do it with both. But okay. Um, all right. So full drive three. <laughs> I just want to mention something about the full drive. It's got three modes. 90s is kind of a, I think that's that's the most compressed mode. Right. Let's play that for a sec. And then there's a mode in the middle, which is, I think used to be called something like comp cut, which is non-compressed. And then, Wide asymmetrical. There's three different types of feel there um, in the main, three different types of feel in the main overdrive mm -hmm. mode. Uh, and then, as you can see on the top here, you can either have overdrive first and then boost, or boost then overdrive. Clever. So, what we were saying earlier, let's just demo that a sec. So, at the moment, it's, it's overdrive. Yeah, then boost. Yeah. yeah. So you hear the compression when the boost is going into the overdrive, it compresses more, the volume isn't as loud, but with the boost after the overdrive it gives it an overall lift and a bit more. Yeah. Okay. Let's hear it with uh, with you. So that would the full drive would need probably need to be in the middle in the middle mode.
It's really nice. Similar. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I've had to go to extreme settings, but it, extreme yeah. settings can be great. There's a lot of, um, one thing I will mention is we're getting quite a lot of uh, really lovely top end hairy fizzy stuff off those Jensen's, mm. which you need to be at a certain volume to really, it, quietly it can sound really kind of, yeah. but actually when, when there's some, it's really nice on the top there, just helps things cut through a bit. Lovely. Okay. Cool. Um, the we Moller. Didn't, we didn't understand what the dynamics control oh, was. Oh, okay. So the dynamics control, it's like a compression on the boost channel. <laughs> You explain that, I'll put, the, I'll put the decal back up. Okay, so, the dynamics control. Uh, if we... If I turn the dynamics down, it will seem louder. But as you turn the dynamics up... So that when I... dig in with the dynamics down evens it out yeah but with the dynamics all the way What do you think that is? Is that a voltage thing or is it a impedance thing? It's a compression thing. So they're uh, compressing that stage so that the boost, oh, okay. so the boost is gain stage. It's just, yeah, so it's, it's allowing, um, reducing the headroom. Yeah. Just, you know, making it more compressed. Uh, compressed. Cool, right, full drive three. Next would be the Moller. Now oh, this yeah. is a, this is a favourite of our friend Peter. Ah, oh, Danish Pete likes the Moller. Danish Pete likes the Moller. And interesting that he comes from Denmark. Ha ha! Right, so the Moller. So you can mix in a bit of the uh, your dry tone. Very nice. That's really nice. There is something, there's something going on with the King of Tone with that, the first, the first bit of that pick, it just, I mean, they all sound they all sound really good, but I can I can definitely hearing why the king of tone is the king of tone. That's one because the they've all been close-ish to yeah. me. The Moller has been probably closest. Yeah, so far. the Moller sounds wicked. Let's just I try love this. that being able to mix in a hair of the. Yeah, yeah. Let's just see what it sounds like with the strumming. <laughs> Thank you. 
don't know whether it's because of the kind of sound we got, but I'm, I seem to be hitting the guitar very hard. Mm. It's encouraging me to do that. I don't mm. know quite why that is, but anyway. <laughs> Mola's really great. I would say closest yet, wouldn't yep, you? Definitely, definitely. Okay, so we've got two more to go. Okay, so the Tim Pierce. Yeah, I like this. I discovered this uh, after, I think I interviewed um, the Jay Rocket guys, Chris yep. and Tassel, and Jay Rocket for a piece and guitarist a couple of years back when the Archer came out mm -hmm. uh, and subsequently got to investigate them a little bit more and stumbled across this a short time later. From the outset, it's kind of a different thing mm -hmm. because it's based on that, the amp that Tim Pierce likes. Tim Pierce, great session player. Um, you can see him on YouTube uh, and probably hear him on loads of great albums. Um, well, let's see. Here you go. Okay, so King of Tone. <laughs> So um, the whole point, this I'll just make the point that the Tim Pierce isn't supposed to sound like a King of Tone. No, no, it's no. got much more compression, mm -hmm. it's got much more kind of furriness, more of a mid-scoopy type sound, mm -hmm. I would say. But, you know, for a take on um, overdrive and then boost, and the boost section in this is trying to sound a little bit more like what you'd expect from an amp's power section. Right. So you get, uh, do, you, do, don't, you don't get the yeah. kind of big clean you get compression, mm -hmm. kind of that sort of looser bottom end, all of that stuff that sure. you would. Good sound though. Yeah, it is good sound. Really Sounds particularly nice. good with that, I think. Okay. I wanted to, to uh, include the Cruiser Deuce by Lazy J. The Cruiser, um, so Jesse from Lazy J, who makes yep. the J20 amplifiers and J40. And he makes these, and again, it's, a, it's an overdrive circuit with a boost. Yeah with cascading gain stages. The difference with this is there's no tone stack in it. Right. It's just open gain stages. So if we listen to the uh, King of Tone. So that's been shaped and you can hear there's a bottom end, roll off, you know, the lovely warm mids and things. Um, whereas if we listen to the, the juice, Oh, 
I'm going to turn the reverb down so we don't continually have this problem. <laughs> uh, just to, uh, I'll just explain that. Dan and I usually start talking before the reverb has tailed off and people have started, to, the moan. Comments, yeah. people have started to moan about it. So we're trying to check ourselves as we go along and being entirely unsuccessful so far. <laughs> yeah, so with the, the juice, there's three different levels of compression at the moment. It's wide open, but there's no tone stack. It's just gain stage and a gain stage and a gain stage. And it sounds it sounds great. It sounds but does sound very open. Yeah, you know. But it's really dynamic, especially. Um, I mean, either Strat or Les Paul. It, um <laughs> At the moment, there's no compression. That is a little bit of compression. Or full on compression. Tell you what's super interesting about that mm -hmm. is um, when you plug into the King of Tone for the first time, you think, "My goodness me, what a transparent sounding overdrive!" Right? And then you plug into something that actually is transparent, and it and it is because it's got no tone stack in it, so it must be. And all of a sudden, the the, the KOT starts sounding very mid humped. Mm -hmm. You can really hear that shaking. Yeah, yeah. really interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's a, you know, it's a it's a very different flavour, you know, but yeah. it's a great great little pedal. But I think that's, we, we would probably both agree that, is there a pedal that sounds exactly like the King of Tone? No. 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 And that's the reason that a lot of people love them and that's why there's such a weighing list for them. Because it is a unique thing and it does, it's incredibly versatile, it does pretty clean to quite filthy and mm -hmm. it seems to suit pretty much every guitar and amp. That's the thing. There hasn't been a rig that I have not been able to dial that into. And I can't say that for any other overdrive pedal I've got. Mm. You know, it's, you know, it's, it is, that's the reason that anyone, if you're wondering about, you know, is, you know, is this pedal going to work? Well, that does. Yeah. You know, so that's why no matter who is after an overdrive pedal, no matter what sort of rig they've got, yeah, one of those, it just sounds wicked. Uh, on the back of that, I cannot wait to read the comments because everyone out there is going to prefer a different one of these pedals. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to say, oh, the Amp 11 is the one that I would have, the, the Tim Pierce is the one that I would mm -hmm. have, the, the Lazy J is perfect for me. And that's the point, isn't it? Because mm. there is isn't there is not a pedal that sounds exactly like the, the King of Tone. No. However, there are others that do a similar kind of job, mm -hmm. a bit overdrivey, a bit boosty. Yeah. They have their own voice. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually might suit you might suit you better. Yeah. So, all right, so let's say the King of Tone never existed. Mm -hmm. Which of these pedals would you choose today? Amp 11. It's either that or the Mola for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Mola does sound really great. Well, that actually, for, for the all-rounder, it's Amp 11 or Mola. Yeah. For the little part of my brain that wants to be in Tube Screamer mode, it's the full drive. Because yeah. it still does that pretty well. Yeah. The, yeah, exactly. It is a, that, again, it has the same chip. Yeah. They, uh, you know, so there's a the more of a similarity about that, but there's a, it's closer to a tube screamer. Yeah. But I was, 
I was surprised by the King of Blues, i got to say. Yeah. I, you know, I did that. That yeah. was like, oh, hello. Bit of an ear tickler going on there. Yeah, That's yeah. very good. Well, I um, think to be, I think it is to the King of Tone as the um, little electromonic harmonics is to the Klon. Okay, yeah, of course. There you go. Uh, what's it called? Um, the... Uh, it's called people the... Are, people are screaming at the screen now. Ah, you're not... It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's called the... Far, I can see the... I can... Hang on. It's I coming. can see it. Um, Come on. Right, hang on. It's called the... Soul food. Soul food. Soul food. Thanks, Mitch. So, uh, yeah, I think the king, the king of blues is to the king of tone what the, the soul, soul food, food is, is to, to the, the clon. Yeah, very It's true. a very affordable kind of there or thereabouts yeah. take on it. The reality is, though, if you suited any one of these pedals, you, you'd be in very good company. I mean, yeah, I, just, yeah. I really like the Tim Pierce as well. Um, the Lazy J is completely unique, and it's got a, it's got such a dynamic thing mm. to it. It's it's fantastic. King of Tone for me is still the one. To plug it in sounds great, but you know, Amp Eleven. I really like the Mola, but I was really. Um, for that slightly more mid scoopy, more sizzy top end, the Amp 11, awesome. Good, there we are. Okay, what's gonna happen in the next, oh, I don't know, two minutes is for all of those of you who say, can we have some Gretsch Filtertrons, please? <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so Dan's gonna play the guitar and I'm gonna switch between the uh, pedals. As we said somewhere earlier, um, Gretsch have just brought out um, Players edition versions of a few guitars, and Adam very kindly at Gretsch sent us this, uh, which is the Lotus Ivory Charcoal Metallic Players Edition 6118 T. String through Brigsby, yes! Very cool. Uh, pinned bridge, locking tuners, medium jumbo frets. Um, yeah. <laughs> The neck on this is divine. It doesn't now. They've done something different to the neck because this doesn't feel like any other Gretsch I've played. It's cool. We took it out of the case and we we're like, yeah. oh yeah. But is is the neck different? Is there a different thing going on with the um, neck? Um, it well, I mean, I have played Gretsches that are that are kind of feel quite small to me, but that right. doesn't feel small. No. So I don't actually know the the, the Gretsch Bigger website frets. will tell you. Bigger, Bigger frets, frets on yeah. this. Okay. Uh, and a new version of the uh, trestle bracing, so it's not centre blocked, but it is still hollow. Anyway, enough about that. Let's hear it. Dan. <laughs> time.
This is the guitar I've always wanted. <laughs> I absolutely love this thing. It's awesome. Just awesome. Very nice. Hopefully everything that just happened on the screen will tell you what was happening. Um, not a bad, so bad sounding pedal in there, is there? No, there isn't. Yeah. Th they're all great. They're yeah. all great. Fantastic. Okay, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it was... <laughs> I had loads of fun. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, we'll see you next week.